Hi, this is Blue Phoenix, and in the last video, I did a live recording of various synths to form the song Chronologist. And in this episode, I'm going to take the stems that I created in that recording and put them into Bitwig and massage them, do some equalization, compression, and add effects, and um, just make it really pop here. So I find these things a little bit harder to do in the hardware side, like these synths don't have equalizers on them. Uh, the mixer has a very rudimentary like three band EQ that I can work with, but I feel like I've got a lot more flexibility in Bitwig. So let's get started with that. Okay, so one thing I did on the Akai MPC, uh, I recorded all the MIDI that was created during the recording. In the MPC, you can export that MIDI into an ALS file, Ableton Live Set. And what I did was I went ahead and opened that Live Set in Bitwig, which is amazing. They added support for that in the last version or two. Uh, so I've actually got all the MIDI here on these three. I don't, I don't know why they only take a few bars of the, like, I don't know why they're 900 bars. So the first thing we're gonna do is just clip that back. So we've got the, the pads here, uh, we got the bass, and we've got the uh, arpeggiator. Now the arpeggiator was handled by the synth itself in that case, so really these are just kind of a chord progression, I believe. Now in this scene too, what I've done is in the multi-track uh, mixer I have, yeah, I recorded all of the instruments as a separate WAV file. Um, and you just take the SD card out of the mixer, pop it in the computer, copy it over and I have dropped them here into Bitwig. Now, when Bitwig first opens the files, it's gonna analyze them for the tempo and it's going to try to warp them to conform to some kind of, I'm not exactly sure, but it's, it's always wrong. <laughs> uh, what I've ended up doing is I've manually set my tempo up here to 95. That's what I had it set for in my synthesizers and everything else. And uh, if you highlight all of the WAV files, and there is an option here on the side in Bitwig mode raw. Raw means uh, do not try to synchronize this thing. I know what I'm doing. Uh, I do believe that this last track that the mixer gives me is the full mix. So I actually don't need this particular track. It is not helping me. Five and six were uh, left and right panned. So those are uh, mono channels. So I actually need to combine these two mono channels uh, into a single stereo channel. So if we play, we've got our drums here and audio five was left, audio six will be right. I'm just gonna turn the volume up a bit. Be able to hear better what we're doing, okay. So it's a little bit of a pain to keep these as separate tracks. I want to combine those into one stereo track. What I'm going to do here is add a new, um, let's see here, a new <laughs> add audio track. I'm going to send these to uh, audio seven, it looks like, the new track I just added. Okay. And now they're going to route through audio seven. Why are these so quiet? Okay, it's at minus 10 dB. So now we have audio seven is the track we care about. And I'm gonna go ahead and just pull over these, uh, these two fellers here and drop them in over here. And then I think I can just uh, highlight the area here with the, let's use the time guy here. And I think I just say bounce in place. It's gonna do a quick now here are the drums. So I can now get rid of these audio files. Now when I was recording this live, I kind of felt like the drums were uh, maybe a little bit weak. We might enhance these a little bit. I kind of like the symbols where they are. But the... Uh, I'm not so keen on the bass drum, I don't think. So we'll see how that goes. Um, I do believe... Let's see here. So this is going to be our... I'm going to rename this to symbols. 
And I like my drums to be red. So we're gonna do that. Uh, let's move on to audio six, I believe. Let's just stop. Okay, here's that bass drum that I wasn't too keen on, but we'll just go ahead and call this bass drum. So this will be the bass. I like my bass to be orange. Kind of like the lights behind me. I guess I don't need to drag those into the arrangement. This is my ARP. <laughs> Not my arrow. Not my arrow, my ARP. My harps I like to be uh, blue color or, or purple, either one. Uh, let's see here. It's pads. Yeah. So if you watch the live recording video, you, I may have mentioned that on the pads, I made those dry. Uh, the mixer does have some built-in effects for uh, delay and reverb. So I can actually add those in the mixer and uh, still rec record the dry signal because the VSTs I have for reverb and delay are mucho bueno and the ones in the mixer are eh, not so good. So we're going to use these higher quality VSTs. Okay, so now I need to work with the pads. Uh, I'm finding a very strange issue here where the, the pads are um, stereo, the output from uh, Hydrosynth is stereo. I'm seeing that one of the channels is um, significantly louder than the other in parts, like right around 89. Let's see why that might be. Uh, of course it's gonna be well, it's gonna be a pain in the butt. Let's see here. Let's just drag them over here and try to figure out what's going on. So, return to arrangement and go to about here. So I'm going to be honest, uh, when I'm listening to it, it seems okay. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and, and bounce these together and uh, we'll, we'll be in good shape. So we need to, just need to, again, add an audio track. We're going to send these both to the new track here, Audio 11. And uh, let's do the bounce. Bounce, bounce. It's really fast since uh, it's just audio. It doesn't have to do any processing on this and boom, it's done. Um, pull this back in over here and uh, I can actually remove these tracks now. They're, they're done. So uh, it looks like this is another master track of everything. We don't really need this either. Oh, we're just gonna delete it. So <laughs> I'll have the intro click. So what I should have now is all of the tracks from the song kind of uh, melded together. And I do believe I should go ahead and drop this guy for now. With everything together, it should be fairly louder. Let's actually just pull this into the arrangement because I have a heck of a time trying to uh, zip around otherwise. So, bye. Uh... Let's change this to pads and I like my pads to be blue. Although if I have an ARP and pads, let's make the ARP Okay, so it took me a few minutes to figure this out, <laughs> but I'm back. Um, I noticed here that the, the bass was ending way early. So you can see this dotted line, that means it thought it was finished. Um, the only thing I could figure is the audio event's length is just simply wrong. And when I set it to say 170, the information's there. I even went and looked at the WAV file, it was the right size and everything. So uh, I, I don't know what happened there, but uh, there's our there's our base. So, um, you know, I'll take it, whatever. <laughs> um, I'm also gonna go ahead now and just shorten these audio clips 
Oh, I'm still in time mode. Let's switch to cursor mode. Here we go. And I can just uh, drag these back. Yeah, I probably meant to stop it here on 154. Anyway, close enough. <laughs> That's why that has the... Uh, <laughs> It had the uh, pre, um, what's it called? The pre-roll, bar pre-roll. So we're going from one to 153. That's uh, 152 bars. That's a multiple of eight. I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. All right. Okay, so now that we got the clips kind of in the right place here inside of Bitwig, um, I could go into EQ first, but I think it's a lot more fun to get the effects going. So I like to uh, add generally t at least two. Uh, we might go with three. So I'm going to add a reverb track here, and we're going to add our trusty, trusty Ether 2C. And I have already got a patch I've been using for years that I tend to like. And let me just make sure the wet is fully set here. There it is. So you don't want your uh, send effects to be wet, uh, dry, have any dry come through. I like to call this long reverb. And then we're gonna add a delay here as well. I kinda like to make my effects blue. Whatever, it's up to you. I think I'm going to use a more feedback machine. So I've actually got a preset here that I borrowed from another artist. Uh, it was, it actually came from uh, Reason, but uh, it's this rolling flute one. Again, I want to make sure I'm fully wet. I have no dry set. Now supposedly on the more feedback machine, they're going to be pushing an update out that really enhances that UI. I'm looking forward to that. So. Where we're going to see the best gains on our delay and reverb would be the good old ARP. So um, it is very quiet. So let me go ahead and turn this boost on again. So let's just take this to heaven here. Oh, so much better already. And that delay. Again, if you want to see those parameters here for rolling flute, feel free to pause the video and copy it. If you've got more feedback machine, go for it. I won't be sad. Same with the reverb here. If you've got Ether 2C, copy away. Or if you've got your own verb, boom. I'm gonna say maybe it's getting a little bit too muddy. So let's add another effect track uh, that uses a shorter reverb instead of that longer one. Very important. Let's uh, load my trusty dusty short reverb. And again, we need to make sure that mix is 100%. Let's take off the long reverb. So for the ARP, if you put a long reverb on your ARP, it starts to sound a lot like the pads and they kind of uh, conflict a little bit. So I like to use a shorter reverb on the ARP and then the pads, we can go ahead and just give it some uh, lovely stuff here. I will say the effects within Hydrosynth are really good, but then they're not really consistent with the delays and reverbs I'm using in here. So that's why I'm preferring to do this in Bitwig. Bass sounds pretty good. I think it's a little quiet. So let's, let's bring that up a bit bring it up a lot. Now for the bass, you could add some reverb. Um, you, if you do so, be sure not to add that reverb on the, the, the lower frequencies. It gets a little bit too muddy and 
you can start to get a little bit of stereo effect in your bass and you don't want that. Um, you could do a cutoff on the stereo portion, the, the stereo band of your reverb if you want to get around that, but that is something you can do. And get your bass loud because <laughs> it's very easy to get it wrong. So I think what I'm going to do is actually go in here and turn up the, um, the clip itself. There should be a gain down here. Let's give it another 12 and uh, try to get that massaged in. Okay. For my drums, I like to hit a, go ahead and use this short verb. Kind of gives us some space. A little bit of delay as well. got the effects in here um, the important thing now is EQ and compression we're gonna need those guys um, I've actually got another project that uh, I'm going to load up here uh, we'll use space architect okay hint hints that is the name of another song on this album okay so uh, I've already got EQ and bass that I had used on that project. Um, I'm sorry, EQ and compression that I had used on the bass. I'm gonna just grab those over here and um, use these. I love the fab filter tools. If you uh, don't have them, you should definitely demo them because the, the EQ and the, and the uh, compressor are just Top notch. I do believe I'm a few uh, versions behind, but they have like a Pro Q3, but I didn't see anything in there I really wanted. So what I'm listening for here is um, when the cutoff filter on the bass kind of opened up, um, it got maybe a little bit too loud. So I'm gonna see if the compressor helps uh, keep that in check here. I think that helped a lot so it brought it down to like another three or four db um, when it hit that bigger uh, cutoff and kind of brought it down to a manageable level um, i've also got a very simple equalizer on here uh, always good to cut off the below 30 because you really can't hear that anyway and uh, just doesn't need to be there let's move on to the uh, pads eq again i'm just going to steal this from myself uh, grab you guys and put you in here. All right, so let's listen to these pads. So one thing to keep in mind when you're EQing your pads, um, this, this bass sounds really nice, but it really clashes with the bass, your, your other bass. So if I bring that other bass in here, and let's say I turn this off, then the pads and the bass really collide here. So just make sure you keep your uh, pads in check here. And I'm gonna dial that bass back a little bit. And uh, where is my... Here's my compressor for the pads. Just watching to see if it does anything goofy here. 
Okay, I'm also on the EQ. I'm increasing the side bands here a little bit on the on the pad to give it more stereo effect. I really like when my uh, volume meter touches the fader. I don't know, maybe that's wrong, but <laughs> you do you, okay? <laughs> I'm gonna steal from, uh, once again, I'm gonna steal my own uh, effects from me. Is it stealing if you take it from yourself? I don't think it is. Uh, the Ubic P is a phaser from Yuhi. Uh, it looks like the next version of Bitwig, they're adding a really nice phaser. So as much as I love Yuhi, um, just wait for that Bitwig patch. Probably get a really nice phaser for free. And here's our compressor. I think it's probably a little bit too quiet now. This is actually making it louder, so I'm okay with that. I think technically I've done something a little bit wrong because I've got the tool before the <laughs> compressor. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off. I wanna change my input gain on this instead. Okay. Again, that bass sounds kind of cool, but it'll really clash with... It starts to clash with the bass that you're really, uh, the, the sub bass here. We'll say I think it's a little high. We'll let some of those, more of that bass in. And I'm actually gonna boost, I think I actually wanna boost the highs on this arm. Okay, so this ARP came out of the Micro Freak, which is a mono channel. You're not gonna get a lot of side. I'm surprised I got any. Oh, it's from the phaser. Gotcha. <laughs> there's really no need to boost the, the sides here because there's not gonna be a lot of it anyway. Yeah, we can give it a try. So uh, that's starting to sound pretty good. Now the bass I had uh, removed. So, so this is the MIDI I had recorded in the MPC for my drums. And I, I'm just gonna throw a kick drum in here of some kind. Let me go to my samples over here. This is probably not what I'm gonna end up with, but I don't wanna sit here boring you with a... Uh... I'm definitely not gonna use that one. <laughs> there were some hard style drum, uh, cake drums in here and I was like, ah, I should definitely use that. Well, anyway, you get the idea. I'll be able to replace that uh, bass drum that I had put uh, in there before with uh, some other sample. All right, so we've got the EQ, the compression, the FX are all going, so we're, we're coming along pretty well. Uh, I think the song needs a little bit more spice though. So fortunately, I've recorded all the MIDI from the uh, session and I can take that same pad progression and um, add my own instruments in here. Some people might say that's cheating, but um, oh well, <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> you think that's cheating. All right, so if you've listened to my music before, you've most likely heard this, um, this ARP sound before, and I'm going to see how that sounds with the pad progression, or the chord progression. Not too shabby not too shabby indeed so we're going to do this return to arrangement and we should it should sound like it goes with the pads
All right, so it's in sync. Uh, I believe it's off an octave. So I'll just do select all, shift up. I am using uh, inside of Diva. Uh, this is generated by Diva. Awesome patch by uh, Luftrum, I believe it was. And uh, still, it's actually got the delay and the uh, reverb built in. I'm gonna take those off of here and use, use my own. So again, short reverb and delay. Okay, so that's just one really quick way I can spice this up. Uh, what I'm probably gonna do though is have the MicroFreak ARP. I'm gonna call this MicroFreak ARP uh, that came from the Arturia MicroFreak, sorry. <laughs> uh, what I might have that do is take turns with the uh, Diva so that uh, you get a little bit of variety in the song. And I can probably do this with some other tunes here and I might actually add a piano over top of all this uh, as well. Um, the libraries I have in contact are just really good. <laughs> I, I don't know how to get those onto the MPC yet, but um, I'm probably gonna add some piano line to this or something to just kind of spice it up. And once I've finished the process of uh, adding new instruments or drums or whatever, um, I'll have to master it. I've, I've had uh, tutorials about mastering in Bitwig slash Ableton before, so we're not gonna go in that, into that uh, again anytime soon. <laughs> so, um, so that's it. That's gonna be it for this episode. Pretty long episode. I, I just recorded at least an hour of footage, I think. So uh, I'm gonna have to clip that down so it's not too crazy for you to watch. But I um, hope you find that informative. Uh, this is how I am exporting the audio that I recorded live and the MIDI as well. And then I can come into Bitwig and create this um, song using the building blocks that I created on hardware. So it's kind of a hybrid approach and it, it just feels a little bit more interesting to me to uh, work with both of these. I'll also probably end up chopping out chunks of of this. Like if, there, if there's places where I'm meant for the pads to be silent, I can completely remove them. Sometimes the filter doesn't close enough to silence the sound all the way. And if there's any mistakes, I can just go in and kind of snip good pieces out, put them, put them where they belong or whatever. So thanks for watching and I will catch you in the next video. Bye for now.